Hey, what's going on guys? Mark here. Welcome back to Car Audio Fabrication. If you've been following along on the channel, I've currently been working on making this ported subwoofer enclosure. It's a down firing subwoofer enclosure for a JL Audio 10 TW3 slim subwoofer. We did the woodworking process. We did the beauty panel insert on top. We did the upholstery. And now in this video, we need to do some testing and see how it performs and hear how it sounds. Along with testing and running some sweeps, we have a couple of other things we need to do. We have to attach the speaker wiring we have to attach the subwoofer grill that's all coming up in this video let's design build and install if this is the first video that you are seeing about the build log process of this box I do have a full build log video for doing all the woodwork I have a full video for doing all the template work here on top and also a video for doing the upholstery which is a really important process to get these nice perfect gaps between each of the pieces. Now the subwoofer is down firing, meaning the subwoofer is underneath there and it's actually facing down. And the advantage of doing this is that we can have it in the trunk of a vehicle and we can put stuff on top of the enclosure, have some groceries in the back, and we don't have to worry about them hitting the subwoofer. In addition, it is also ported. So we're gonna have a little bit more output and a little bit more low end frequency extension. We're gonna find out just how much when we do our testing. Now the next thing I wanna do here is even though that subwoofer is underneath and somewhat protected, something could still roll underneath here and potentially have the subwoofer hitting against it and damage the subwoofer. So we want to add this speaker grill. I'll flip the box over so that I have access to the subwoofer. Now I have a wiring pigtail that I need to get connected to our speaker terminals here. Also have the grill. How did I determine what grill was needed? I do want to take a quick second and show you something here and thank our show sponsor, Crutchfield. One of the reasons I really like shopping with Crutchfield when it comes to picking out something like a subwoofer or amplifier or other gear is all the value added information that they have on their site. They of course will have the information from the manufacturer, but they add their own additional information by doing their own research and making sure that every detail you would need to know is on the product page. They also of course have reviews and in this case we can see customer provided pictures. And another category that I really like here, if we click accessories, we can find the exact grill that we need for our subwoofer. If you want to take advantage of a special offer for car audio fabrication fans, you can check out the link here on screen or down in the video description. Let's continue on with prepping this box. So one of the things that I really like about the JL Audio lineup of subwoofers is they make their own grills that are made out of this expanded metal mesh but what's awesome is it's not like a separate grill where you have to drill new holes and actually mount this huge monstrosity around the outside of the subwoofer. It actually integrates as part of the speaker. With that press fit around the outside here, this is held in place really well. It's not like you have any added fasteners around the outside that could potentially rattle. It's not like there's a bunch of open space like this is like a bar system or anything. This completely protects the subwoofer. So once upside down, now you can tell nothing is going to be able to get underneath this and hurt that sub. And if you're wondering if you do need to take this off, you can just take a dental pick and carefully get inside one of those holes and pull against the speaker and it will pop off. It does take a little bit of force to do so. We want this grill to stay put. The other thing I need to attach really quick is my wiring pigtail. I made it this special quick disconnect connector here. I actually did a review about these in a previous video. You can check out in the corner of the screen. Let's get this attached. In the meantime, here's the other end that is prepped inside the vehicle. In order to plug in there, we have that wire obviously attached to our subwoofer amplifier, which is hidden back behind here. We are testing this in the Grand Cherokee project that I built. I obviously still need to make a beauty panel here over these amplifiers. I'll be honest with you guys, this is one of those projects that just happened to get put on hold in the meantime, just with working on a bunch of other projects. But let me show you guys a little bit about what I have planned. This is the factory panel removed from the vehicle. Obviously there's normally a factory subwoofer there that we've removed. So I need to do some modifications to this plastic panel, which will probably include removing the carpet and making a bezel that will allow me to mount some of these computer fans. These are really nice fans, they're super quiet but I'm gonna mount a series of them right here and have them blowing into that chamber or removing the air out of the chamber. One of the two, we'll have to do some testing, but let me know, do you guys wanna see the build process of adding these fans to this rack and making modifications? Obviously, I'm gonna to have to block out this hole, make it look like it fits the vehicle, 
Let me know if that's something you guys want to see. So we've got the enclosure sitting in the vehicle. Obviously, if we were driving around with this, we'd want to make sure that it's mounted inside the vehicle so it can't move around. But in this case, we're just doing some quick testing to see what the performance of this is. So we are good to go. Let's get this hatch closed. So we're here in the vehicle and I've connected my laptop to the DSP that is sending the signal to our amplifiers. And right now I am on the subwoofer channel, number 10 here. And you can see that if I open the equalizer, I don't have any EQ applied whatsoever, so we're going to see how this box performs without any EQ correction. Now I also have a microphone here at the listening position in the vehicle here at the headrest, and I'm going to use this program here called Room EQ Wizard, R-E-W, and I'm gonna run a quick sweep in order to test the frequency response. After taking three different measurements at slightly adjusted listening positions, we have very consistent results. That's expected as this is the base range of frequencies from 20 hertz up to 100 hertz. There's not going to be much of a difference in different listening positions due to the length of the wave. What's cool about this program is I can come down here and I can average the response and get this curve in red. If we analyze this data, we can see that we have a nice, fairly even response from 30 hertz up to 40 hertz. We do have a bit of a hump from 40 hertz going on up to 45 hertz, which then levels back down at 50 hertz. A lot of this is probably due to the cabin gain within the vehicle. And then between 50 and 60 hertz, we tend to roll off even more, which is fine because that's the point at which we will cross over and hand over to our mid-bass speakers up front. So what I want to do next is use the DSP to kind of tame this hump and even things out. So I've spent some time on the equalizer here, making some slight adjustments. And after doing all that, I was able to get the performance of the subwoofer much more level from about 25 hertz all the way up to about 53 hertz ish i do still have this little bump at around 45 hertz due to the cabin gain it is hard to tame that with a graphic equalizer maybe with a parametric equalizer i could target more of that exact frequency on a narrow bandwidth but in the meantime i'm pretty happy with this response let's give it a listen on music and hear how it sounds so to do our listening test i'm going to use the little zoom h1n recording device here. I'm going to hold it in the listening position and also keep in mind to even hear the bass you're going to want to have a good pair of headphones in or be listening over an external speaker system. Your phone speaker isn't going to reproduce bass. This doesn't have a subwoofer built in and also always remember that the experience here in person is a lot different than you could ever hear through a recording and replaying on a different pair of speakers. Let's take a listen. First of all, for what this is, a single 10 that is down firing and that is a slim subwoofer, this definitely gets down. It obviously isn't going to set any SPL records or anything like that, but that's not what this is designed for. It's designed to sound good and for, again, the aesthetics of the subwoofer being hidden and protected. To me, a better evaluation of a subwoofer is how responsive it is, how quickly it can respond to fast input, things like a bass drum and rapid hit of a snare. For that reason, one of the tracks I like to use to evaluate a subwoofer is called Improvisation. It's literally just a guy kind of improving a bunch of drum hits. It's from one of the Focal 
testing CDs. When I listened to that track using this subwoofer, definitely impressed. Very responsive, very snappy, very punchy. And in this vehicle, it also imaged really well. The bass really seemed to appear to come from the front, but that more deals with the system setup of the vehicle. So there we have it. The downfiring subwoofer enclosure project is complete. This isn't going to be permanently installed in this vehicle. It was more of a just a fun little test to see what we could build and see what we could do and to show you guys some more ideas for building a subwoofer enclosure like this here on the channel. A special thank you to Crutchfield for being a monthly channel sponsor. Next time you're planning out a car audio system, definitely check out their site here at the link on screen or down in the video description. And a special thanks to Lonnie Ali, William Marcos, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible and thank you for watching.